notice that if you're riding your bike slow, you tend to stand up high because there's like no resistance and it's just easy to move. But if you're going fast, you get more aerodynamic. Because as you go faster, the drag force increases. Drag resistance is a relation of drag force to velocity. Okay, so drag resistance. Let's get to the top of this. Let's see. Drag resistance. It's a resistance. It's now it's fluid resistance. We've talked about mechanical resistance, which is friction. Now it's a fluid resistance. It's given by a capital R for resistance and a big D of subscript for drag resistance. And drag resistance is the ratio of the drag force. And this is the this is what's pushing against you as you're trying to move. I'm trying to move forward and all that air is hitting me and I've got to push it out of the way and change it. And that's a force. Divided by the velocity the object's moving at. Drag force over velocity. As there's a relationship between these, let me show you this. So drag resistance is drag force over velocity. I'll give you the units. It'd be like, uh, let's see, pounds per, I don't know, miles per hour. Um, uh, newtons per meter per second. Uh, you can have a lot of these because it's units of force divided by some unit of velocity. Now check this out. If I plot drag force versus velocity, what I'll find is that as I start out moving, as I increase the velocity, the drag force increases proportionally. And so the ratio, since this is a straight line, the ratio of the rise over the run stays the same, right? The slope doesn't change. And the rise, drag force over the run, velocity, that slope is just the drag resistance. So as I start out with this straight line, constant slope, the drag resistance, which is drag force, velocity is constant but then you get to a certain speed and it does this as I go faster and faster the drag force okay uh, when it started to slope up so as I go faster and faster the drag force increases faster than the velocity. This line goes up. So the slope is increasing. So the drag resistance increases. It's no longer proportionate. If I double the velocity, I may like triple or quadruple the drag force. And here's the reason. As I'm going slow, the flow is, it's called laminar. I've got laminar flow. Laminar flow means as I'm moving along, all the flow it moves around me and it comes back and it doesn't change its shape. So it's like you've got a body moving forward and the air hits it and the air moves along and it moves around it and that takes some force to do to move that air around but the air doesn't get disturbed too much. So you have these smooth streamlines, it's called laminar flow. The path the air takes, they all move uniformly. As they go faster and faster, now, when the particle, let me do it again, when I'm going really fast, then as the air comes up, as it comes up here, it's forced to, it's knocked, knocked around faster, and it's forced into the, the neighboring airstream, and it knocks that one over, and it produces turbulence. Now, the air isn't all moving in the same direction. When it was laminar, the streamlines were all separate from each other. Now they're running into each other. They're creating turbulence. These are called eddies. 
and as the turbulence increases, that's all wasted energy, right? Because it's not going this way. Now I put energy into it enough so that I'm actually doing this, moving in circles. So as the drag resistance increases, because now I've started turning some of that, instead of just moving the air away, I've started giving enough energy to be turbulent. And I'm in the turbulent regime. Now as I add more and more, a lot of it goes into turbulence, and so I don't, I get an even bigger drag force. So again, the ratio, the slope of this line, the drag force to the velocity, that's the drag resistance. I'm increasing here, as I increase velocity, I'm increasing drag force, but they're proportionate, and so the ratio stays the same. The, drag, the slope and the drag resistance are constant. As I get turbulent, the drag resistance increases. So let's do an example. All right, so let's say I'm uh, riding along on my bike. I know, uncanny resemblance. It's a gift. As I'm moving along on the bike, let's say I'm moving at uh, a velocity of 12 miles per hour, and I feel a drag force of uh, 20 pounds. So A, what's my drag resistance? Make sure you don't get confused between drag force and the drag resistance. Your drag resistance is the ratio of the drag force to the velocity, which is 20 pounds over 12 miles per hour. Now, I don't need to break these up. I'm just going to leave them as pound per mile per hour. That's going to be, uh, so that's going to be 1.67 pounds per mile per hour. Now, let's just use this graph for good instead of evil. Let's try using it out here. B, assuming laminar flow. I figured out my drag resistance at 12 miles per hour. I know as I increase the velocity, the drag force is going to go up. So assuming laminar flow, If I increase my velocity to 24 miles per hour, I'll call it V2, excuse me, what's the new drag force? Now, why did I say assuming laminar flow? Well, because it's easier to do. Look, look what happens. If I'm in laminar flow, the drag resistance stays constant. So if I increase the drag force, or the, dra the velocity, the drag force is going to increase proportionately. The drag resistance won't change. So I can say, well, the new drag resistance is the same as the old. It's laminar flow, so the new drag resistance, it hasn't changed. Drag resistance is the new drag force the new velocity, if I solve for the new drag force, I just multiply both sides by the velocity, and I get the new drag force is the new drag resistance times the new velocity. Let's see if that works out. Well, the new drag resistance is the same as the old, it's laminar flow. 1.67 pounds per mile per hour. The new velocity is 24 miles per hour. The miles per hour cancel, and I wind up with 40 pounds, which makes sense. I doubled the velocity from 12 to 24 miles per hour. It's in a laminar regime, so that ratio, drag force to velocity, stays the same. So if I double the speed, I'll double the drag force up to 40 pounds, and make sure you get the units you want. If I'm looking for drag force and I get something, if I get miles per hour, I screwed up. So that's drag resistance.